Hey folks, and welcome to a episode of Building an Icon with some of Rotterdam Dice. Basically, we pick some of our favorite characters from pop culture and we think, hey, what would they look like in a D&D &D game? I'm joined by people. <laughs> He doesn't remember our names. No, I don't. Who are brutally going to brutally criticise every decision you've made. Yes, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> it's deserved with this one. But tell me about yourselves. Well, I'm Paul. Yeah, there we are. <laughs> Hi. <laughs> it's normal level of chaos. I'm Tony, your favourite member of Roll the Damn Dice. Um, I'm, I'm cosy in a nice hoodie. I think these two are quite cold. And I, was, I, made, a, I made a choice and I'm sticking with it. I'm very happy well, with so it. Stephen's sort of Wearing a holy jumper. Regret everything. But what I do not regret is my character choice for today, which is Xena, warrior princess. Now, she literally fits into a D&D &D setting perfectly because yeah, it's all lazy. just swords and shield. Lazy, rude. Rude. But yeah, it's swords, it's shields, it's magic, it's gods and stuff. So I have agonized over this for ages. Like, because is she a barbarian? Is she a fighter? Is she a monk? Maybe she's all free. This entire series was just based, built, because you wanted to do Xena, is it? Yeah, pretty much. This is yeah. my year of um, making stuff happen. <laughs> Specifically that you want. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it's about my own sort of uh, manifesting. So, but, so you're like a mate, you're a massive Xena fan. Yeah, yeah. Cause like I was born in the eighties. So like, I think it was on like channel five when I was like 11, 12, 13, that age. And it was just so cool. I've watched quite a lot of Xena, but I'm not, I've not got your level of fan. Like I haven't been to a convention, that would be a dream. <laughs> I'd love to be Lucy Lawless. She she's I mean like I don't know that she's amazing, but like I follow on Twitter. She seems pretty amazing. She does. Oh, yeah. Awesome. She's one of my favourite people to follow on Twitter. Um but Xena. So yeah. But, but Tony Xena knowledge? Mm, very Maybe minimal. Great. You can't well, get it anywhere. You can't watch it. I would, but you can't. Sort it out, Netflix. We let, we've let you lot watch Friends. Oh, what God. More do you want? And then try to sell us every single piece of merch you possibly could. Whilst it's of its time, it's a lot less problematic than Friends. <laughs> yes, it is. Yep. Dated, but still like fine. Yeah. yeah. Xena was a bisexual, leather clad warrior who even had black boyfriends. So it was very progressive for its time. I figured, um, well, first of all, I went with human. Makes sense. Sure, yeah. sure, yeah. She's pretty human. Yeah. There was one episode where they kind of toyed with the idea of her being a demigod, but we'll stick with human. Um, a demigod isn't a. It, 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 it wasn't. It wasn't. Yeah, it wasn't official canon. But Asimar. Yeah. Asimar would. Yeah, if you're doing a demigod, I'd say Asimar. But yeah, no, I've, I've stuck with human because um, obviously, if you go human variant, you get the feet. Oh, when you do Wonder Woman, you can go Asimar. Exactly. <gasps> <laughs> Oh, I'm going to agonise over that one. I know. Because that's like, to me, Wonder Woman would be like a paladin slash fighter. So anyway, Xena. <laughs> um, so, human, and we've gone with the variant of athlete, um, which is awesome because you get to choose if you're going to put a one into strength or dexterity. Um, and if you are prone, you just use five feet to get back up. That famous sort of buffy flip thing um, and yep you don't use any extra movement for climbing and it also improves your jumping and running if you remember the show she moved impossibly um, she would fall off things and just be fine walk it off one of my favorites is her dislocating her shoulder and she just knocks it into a cave wall or better she was rock hard she was well hard um, so yeah we've gone with human variant and yes so three classes barbarian and the DM allowed you to do this. <laughs> <laughs> well, I haven't played this character yet. I mean, well, I won't play Xena. That'll be ridiculous. But I quite like this build. So yeah, gone with two levels of Barbarian. Yeah. Obviously, we're going to get Rage in there. We're going to get Danger Sense. So that's uh, advantage on any dexterity-based uh, saving throws. Um, and the Reckless Attack, which I think is quite Xena. So that will give you advantage on all your attacks, but then people attacking you also have advantage because you're reckless. Um, fighter, I've gone with three levels um, and gone for the uh, martial archetype. I don't know fighters well 
at all. I never play them. Um, kind of. I mean, no offence if you love, it's kind of a boring class, isn't it? Like, uh, yeah, it, for, it's one of those ones I, I see other people do it and I'm like, I can see you having fun with it, but for me, like, it's just not, it's not interesting no. enough. I'd have to uh, do what, what Moore's done with Blue, I think, and... Um, do, like, the multi-class kind of thing. Because I've yeah. played, like, a straight fighter level seven. Um, but, basically, by doing that, um, obviously, I'm going to have my um, second wind, so a bit of healing. Always good. She seemed to never die, except for when she did die, but then she came back. She was very good at getting better from death. Um, and action surge. So if I um, can take an extra action on my turn, she did fight quite fast. Um, and then with that, I'm also going to be able to crit on 19 as well as 20. So she's going to throw out some major damage. So that's five levels, uh, two barbarian, the three fighter, and then I'm going to go the rest of the way, monk because she was insane. Like, she would just catch arrows that are being thrown at her. Um, absolutely gravity-defying moves. Um, one time, I, there was like an episode where she literally just jumped, kicked on someone and backflipped off them, which I've used that move as Lahan. Um, I was very inspired by this show as a kid. Um, so yeah, it's basically mixing all of the melee classes together to create this really broken fighter. But that, that, that's that's how it would work. Yeah, no, I yeah, I was I was only thinking if you could squeeze in um, uh, Blade Singer as well. <laughs> yeah, that'd be the only if you could somehow multi-class into Wizard for the last yeah. ten levels. The what? last thing I was expecting you to say is oh, shove shove another class <laughs> in there. Yeah, I mean the thing is I don't. She had some magic ability um, when she had the ability to kill gods, sort of thing. Yeah. Um, for season five, um, but then that was taken away during season six. Um, but yeah, it, it didn't make sense to have any kind of magic in there. So I thought I'd stick with the yeah. no, three no, no, marshals, no, no, no. Um, and then statting it. Now, obviously, Xena is a twenty in everything. She was beautiful. She was really clever. She was no, wisdomous. It, intelligent. Book, yeah. book learning. Um, oh no, that's what Gabrielle was for, yeah. wasn't it? Yeah, okay. We can drop intelligence, but other than that... That wasn't all that Gabrielle was for. <laughs> <laughs> Spoilers! <laughs> um, so, but this build is dexterity based. So, throw um, a lot into your dexterity, a lot into your wisdom. Fundamentally, you're building a monk. Um, now, that is a bit tricky when it comes to raging as a barbarian, because when you rage as a barbarian, all your strength-based attacks. Yeah. So you'd have to chat nicely to your DMs, see if they will allow um, all of your attacks to be the plus two damage bonus. What do you think, Paul? Sorry, hang on. So what? So this this build is a dexterity base fighter yeah. because of a monk. So using the short sword yeah. and the boomerang. The boomerang is a chakram, but I'll explain that in a bit. Um, those are classes dexterity weapons. Yes. But when you rage, you get a plus two to damage on your strength attacks. No, I think you. I, that's the problem, isn't it? When you've got multi multi class, yes. that you're gonna, There is a payoff somewhere. There is a payoff. So, so you know, you'd have to. You'd have to have a strength based weapon as well, I guess. I would say that's fair. Um, I would say the. What's, what have you got? What is her strength at the moment? Um, the strength. I've only gone thirteen, so it's only a plus one to strength. Mm. Um, but unarmed attack is a strength attack. Obviously, with a monk, you get it all statted out mm. to your dexterity. Um, but to hit somebody is a strength-based attack. So I would say probably you won't be able to use your rage bonus on swords attacks. You won't be able to use it on the boomerang anyway because that's a ranged attack. But when it comes to actually fisticuffs, might as well just have the bonus on there. That's, that would be my thoughts. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah I think you... Yeah. Yeah. We've got to do rules. Rules is written. Rules, is, rules written. is written for this. You can't just I kept, break them. I kept being, oh, that's good. Oh, unearthed, <laughs> unearthed arcana. <laughs> but yeah, you've always got these things to consider. But, so with your armor class, yeah. obviously this is going to be, I imagine, pretty damn high. Uh, I was wondering, how have you done that? Because obviously your normal bog standard ar uh, armor class is your... Um, 10 yeah. plus, I want to say dex off the top of my head. It's uh, you, 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 it's a straight 10 for most characters. Some characters are an 8, depending. And yeah, it's plus a dex and then plus any equipment that you're wearing. Yes. And then with Monk and Barbarian, that's slightly different. So you get it's 10 plus, I want to say, 10 plus dex plus strength. And then 10 plus, 10 <laughs> plus dex plus, plus wisdom, wisdom for, for Monk. monks. Yeah. I was just wondering which thing have you decided so, to go for? I've gone with Monk. 
because it will grow with the wisdom and the dexterity. Um, currently, I've done this to level 10, so two, three, five. Um, it sits at 17, which I think is pretty fair. That's unarmored, technically. If you watch the show, um, she sort of got some leather. I mean, I, it's a breastplate <laughs> and a leather mini dress. I'm not convinced. <laughs> I'm not convinced that's a... Despite what all you teenage boys think, that is not enough armour for a woman to wear going into battle. No. That leather wasn't for armour. That leather was to make sure you could watch that show pre-Watershed. <laughs> <laughs> I thought, like, the season finale, she was literally in like a samurai bikini. It was a two-piece samurai <laughs> outfit. Like, they knew what they would... It, it, it was the 90s. Everything was cheesecake. And fair enough. But, but yeah. she wasn't... Lucy Lawless is beautiful. Yes. But she isn't a classic a classic beauty for the 90s. Like, yeah. the 90s was that sort of heroine chic. Yeah, she was... And she she is. Uh, sort of hench. Well, she's not. She's tiny. Um, she's quite it was, broad, it was, it was the, sh the shoulder pads on the dress with the armbands around here gave uh, muscle. She was she was trim because obviously lots of bikinis were happening in that show. Um, she was slim, but actually no, she's not. She's not huge. But yeah, um, things in the boots as well. So she seemed yeah. Imposing. Well, that's what they went for that bigger yeah. look. So the, well, sure it she... wasn't exactly. One second, is it? They wasn't as cheesecakey as it could have been. Oh, I don't know. Uh, I don't know. I mean, I've, I've watched every episode. Um, it was. It was. Stephen. Apparently, the ancient Greeks invented underwire. Let's just <laughs> <laughs> another Greek invention I'm, for you. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, she she appealed she appe appealed to gay young men. She did. <laughs> she did. Um, but yeah, so I've gone with unarmored. So you can just style the character how you want. Doesn't matter. You can put whatever you want on there visually, because you're not wearing any armour, um, and that's the best way to do it, because as your dexterity and your wisdom grows, your armour class will grow, grow, grow with it. Because I think with that, any of those things, whatever, if I was DMing it, I would say whatever class you start with, that's what you've got to. So for the instance, with that unarmoured thing, if you yeah. started as a monk, so if you're going to build the character from level from one, level one. Them. I don't recommend it. It would be, it would be a hard, well, there's people are like at level five and they're starting to feel a bit spicy and a bit special. You'd be there with like your one monk, your two barbarian and your one fighter. And I think that would be a tough play. Well, you could go five levels in monk, I suppose, and then start experiment, bringing the others in. Yeah, yeah, you could. At that point, because if you're going for a dex build, then it's a monk, isn't it? Yeah, totally. And it, 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 I think it, it works as a dex build. Yes, um, Xena was incredibly strong in the show, um, but this works to dex, and she was incredibly dexy as well. Um, I assume from that then is that obviously this is a level ten. I've got level ten. Done. Yeah. Would you then, I assume from that, you'd go then monk from then on? Monk the rest of the way. So the I've way. gone with the uh, subclass of um, Way of the Drunken Monk. Um, not for any reason other than whilst it's made to be a sort of stumbling fool who's um, who, who's navigating battle, it's an incredible monk class. Um, later features of it are um, you can't be poisoned, um, that you can... Um, if an enemy misses you, you can actually push them onto an another target, so you can make them hit your friend, um, or you can make them hit um, one of their companions, as long as they're within five foot. So it's almost like someone goes to attack you and you go, no, you don't, um, which is a lot of fun. And again, very on vibe with this character. Um, what else does Monk give you? <laughs> I've got so much reading Look at that. Do. It's laminated. I did laminate it. See. You've got slow fall. Um, if she slows falls whilst raging, um, she would take 25 off the damage of her fall, and then she'd only take half the damage because she was raging. So falling off 60 foot from a cliff probably wouldn't do that much damage, if any. That's great. And I feel that's a Xena-esque. I feel like oh, she'd yeah. power it off superhero power land. She would superhero power land slash walk it off. <laughs> As I, I had a question for you. Yeah, yeah. Um, as, uh, you know, representing straight white men everywhere. Mm -hmm. Obviously, the one episode I remember is where she had her hands tied behind her back. She squeezed her boobs together and a knife flew out <laughs> over her head and down and sliced the ropes behind yeah. her. How, do you feel like your build, you've got the skills within there to 
make that happen. Absolutely. Um, <laughs> done that in the episode. Yeah, the boob dagger thing was, I think... The boob, <laughs> it's like, it's just so funny. The boob dagger, I think, was retired around about season two. But it was literally a little dagger that had like a handle that curved, so it would just sit there. And yeah, there was one episode where... And <laughs> over, she managed to sort of aim it over her own yeah. head, down, and cut the ropes behind her. Is that a slight of boob check? <laughs> a slight of boob. <laughs> I mean, we've had the boob of holding. For... We did, yeah, we had the boobs of holding, and Xena has a slight of boob check. I think mean, that's what inspired that would have to Joy be some, Amy. Yeah, some sort of magical item we need there, wouldn't you? Yeah, I think that's what inspired Joy Amy with Frayne to have the boobs of holding was just yeah. <laughs> <laughs> pulling weapons out. <laughs> Um, but yeah, I don't know which episode that was, but I do remember the scene. Ridiculous. So what do you think about using her in a combat situation? I think it would be awesome. So um, personally, I would start running in, probably activate my rage straight away. Um, I've got boomerang stacks in there, which is, which is to represent the chakram, which was one of her main weapons. It's basically a knife frisbee. Makes no sense. If you caught that, you take your hand off. But again... Xena. Um, so throw that at an enemy and then probably go in with a sword attack, um, obviously not adding any rage bonuses at this point. Um, obviously if you're getting projectiles thrown at you, then you just catch them because you're a monk. Um, throw them back at the enemy, spending a key point. Next round, probably go in with lots of fist attacks, so that's two, um, adding rage damage for all of that. Um, and then also flurry of blows and stuff. You can disengage from enemies when using flurry of blows and focus on other enemies because Xena was very much the kind of person that took on hundreds of enemies at once. There was actually an episode where she took down all of the Spartans. It wasn't the Persians, it was Xena. So yeah, I would have a lot of fun with this one. A lot of fun. Yes, I, I, yeah. I think you could build it in another way. But I don't know what it is off the top of my head. <laughs> I would love to hear how somebody else would do this. Yeah, I'm sure there's a whole load of other ways. Yeah. I mean, you've got all... Uh, uh, she is a very martial... Yeah, that was it. It was... it was Because outside of Monk, there isn't a lot of martial. Which you, you don't need more than one martial, really. Um, but yeah, outside of Monk, there wasn't a lot of martial in D&D. So that's why we kind of had to build it around Monk. But also... Bearing in mind that she is a fighter and she is a warrior, hence where the barbarian and the fighter skills come in. So, but yeah, if you think differently, if you think I've made terrible choices and you can do better, absolutely tell me in the comments. I would love to read it. Until next time, 